It's amazing, you always think you have it all figured out. Then you don't. There we go. Alright, hey, good morning everybody. What a great day. A little breeze, it's September for a few more days. It's officially fall. And away we go. And everything good is going to happen. It does all the time. I want to welcome you to worship this morning to let you know that our order of worship is real similar to what we did last week, that we will have a time of reflection uh, coming up right after we get done with the announcements. We'll do a collective call to worship. It's very short. There's three different pages, but it's very, very short. Um, we will do uh, our reading, uh, which is from Philippians today, and then we will uh, go to the message. We're going to have some wonderful music after the message. Go to our time of prayer, and then we will wrap things up. And so we have found that we can bring this in very close to 30 minutes. We've gotten very good at that, so we will continue with that way. So again, I would ask you to please enjoy yourself, but also to find that quiet place, find that spot where you are comfortable, where you can feel open, that you are ready to receive anything that might come your way, clear your mind out, and let's just take a moment and do a little time of reflection. Thank you. Now, if you will join in with our call to worship, and uh, your parts are in bold and underlined. And so, our call to worship. Jesus has called us here this day. We are here. Oh, Lord. Off 
often what we say and what we do are very different. Come now. It's come. Now is a time of restoration and hope. We did very, very well. In the coming weeks, we're going to work on our enthusiasm. <laughs> See if we can get it up, get a little emotion in the thing. Maybe even a little drama if we have to go that way. So today's readings, we're going back to Philippians to Paul. And Paul is still in jail. And he's still imploring the folks at Philippi to not only do what he's asking them to do, but to be a church of unity to be a church that comes together. In some versions, he will say, be of one mind. He's asking them to have the same intent and do what they were going to do, and that is to follow the ways and teachings of Jesus. Paul also tells us that his wish is for us to do the very same thing and then to actually do it. So our reading for today. <clears throat> Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort in love, any sharing in the Spirit, any sympathy, complete my joy by thinking the same way, having the same love, being united, and agreeing with each other. Don't do anything for selfish purposes, but with humility think of others as better than yourselves. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. Adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, he did not consider himself being equal with, with God something to exploit. So he emptied himself by taking the form of a slave and by becoming like human beings. When he found himself in the form of a human, he humbled himself by coming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God highly honored him and gave him a name above all names, so that at the time of Jesus everywhere in heaven, on earth and, on earth and under the earth might bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my loved ones, just as you always obey me, not just when I am present, but now even more while I am away, carry out your own salvation with fear and trembling. God is the one who enables you both to want and to actually live out his good purpose. So, we come then today to a message from Philippians about how to be a church, and as a church, to get along with one another, to try and agree with one another, to try and come to some kind of conclusion of what's best for the church. Now, isn't that amazing that that reading today happens to be on the day that we're having a church meeting and have some serious discussion? I think that's amazing. I think it just it fit in so well. There was another one I was looking at, and as I read through this one, I thought, no, this is... This is what we want to do. This is what we want to talk about today. I can tell you that every church that I'm aware of, and I'll bet you would say the same thing, has a plan that they want to grow. Everybody wants to grow, right? They want their church to grow. And that means that if you have a growing church, then most likely you have a healthy church. And we could say that growth and healthy go hand in hand but maybe we want to step back, maybe we want to take a different look at it, and maybe separate those two. Talk about a healthy church, or talk about a growing church. Because a growing church doesn't necessarily mean attendance. In fact, I think we would find that if we felt that we were a healthy church, that attendance would take care of itself. So then what indeed makes us a healthy church. Well, we look at the Gospels and we're reading about Jesus, and we know one thing that Jesus came 
with some good news, he was delivering the goods, and crowds showed up all the time wherever he was. The attendants came because he had a message that people wanted to hear. They wanted to be part of what it was. Now, in some cases, they just needed that to make themselves feel better. In other cases, they needed some kind of healing from within. Maybe it was physical, maybe it was emotional, what have you. And they heard that being with this Jesus was the place to be. So Jesus found a way to attract people by what he was doing. Okay, that was Jesus. So what about us? Well, here's what I believe. And here's what Paul tells us too. God wants us to be that draw. But God doesn't mean that we have to do everything. We have, back in the days of, of uh, my time with soccer, when I traveled quite a bit, there was one gentleman from Indiana that uh, constantly talked in cliches all the time, drove me crazy. We actually had little pools going of how many times he would say the word minutia while he was making his plea and what have you. But he liked to say all the time, we need to go up to the 30,000 foot level and take a wider run and look at the whole thing. And I think that's kind of what it is too, is if we can take a different look at it, we can say that really, you know what God wants us to do? God wants us to plant the seeds. We don't have to do a lot of stuff. We can tend to them a little bit, but God wants us to plant the seeds, tend to them somewhat, but God will take care of the growth of those seeds, and it can become something wonderful. It can spring out, but it comes back again to planting and who's doing the growing. One of the things that drives me crazy, you guys hear me talking about it all the time, is the number of folks that uh, hit me with their Christianity and how important it is to be a Christian, but what really is a Christian? That's a tough thing to say. What's a Christian? What's a true believer? You guys see that too? You see that where somebody says, well, if you were a true Christian, this is what you would believe. What's a true Christian? What's the true belief that we've got? Because think back on being in all the time versus having to do some thinking or working through it like we can do here and figure out what it is that we are and what it is we do and what our ministry is, that as we are thinking through that thing, Remember that even when Jesus was preaching, and who wouldn't believe Jesus? When Jesus was preaching, he had 12 disciples that were doing all the work for him. And there was a group of them that didn't quite catch on. There was Thomas, there was John, there was Peter. And they questioned all the time, what are you doing? Why would you do that? Who are you? Even and rose and came back from the dead, and everybody was in except Thomas was still there going, until I see him in person, I'm not going to buy it. So they were struggling with the whole thing, yet at some point they all said, okay, I get it. So we're talking about churches and we're talking about growth. And I am sitting up here saying growth isn't about the numbers, it's about us, it's about growing ourselves inside. It's about becoming that church that we can be by trying to define a ministry that we can be. And we've done it, people. We've done it. In fact, we're there now in a lot of different ways that we can define what our ministry is. And that seed that's planted and God is helping to grow is going to have people coming to find out what it is we got going on here because it's that good. We have an amazing story. Tell, and I don't know that we do that that much. I think there are times that people have been going here for years and still kind of have that empty feeling, still have kind of that spirituality that might be missing just a little bit, or they haven't really grown a lot since they came here, and it could go for decades. But there's also people that had a vision to start everything. I think back in the, uh, I had to do some math this morning to realize that it's been right at about 41, almost 42 years. In fact, it'll be 42 years right after the first of the year that Paul and I moved to Larchwood. And a little pastor showed up at our house and invited us to church, and we showed up here. I don't even remember where we sat the first day. 
But I remember the people that were here that made up the thing. They were the ones that had the vision to build this building. Vision to make this congregation work. And it's not going to mean to some of you these names aren't going to mean anything at all. But I still remember it. Abel and Elaine used to sit right over there. His pew was his pew. And if it happened to be, and it was one back from where you two are sitting right now with the Steens, if you were there and he came in, he would let you know, that's my spot. You have to move. Chuckle if you will. I saw it happen many times. <laughs> many, many times. Harold and Lou used to sit right over here. It was Orlo and Doris. It was uh, Floyd and Naomi Holman. They were a hoot. They lived right across. They built what's now our parsonage. We had uh, Joel and Adeline Midland, uh, Marvin, Sharon, Lake. With some of those that were there were here all the time, the Warners, and there were lots of Warners that were here. There were several families that were involved in the thing. The Sangers, the Bonanders, the Horns, Marilyn Van Ash, Van Schuers. They were the bedrock when we got here. They saw something and they made it happen. They not only built this building, but they built this church. And what a wonderful job they did. But that was then, and times have changed, and things have changed. Now, we all know change isn't good in church, is it? It isn't good, because I'm a little shaky up here, because I know back there in the kitchen that the coffee ovens are not where they were supposed to be. Because somebody moved them to new cabinets. I don't know. It's going to take me a while. It's going to take me a while. And you said, I'm looking right at somebody in the back that did that. So you're working on that all the time. So it's not their church anymore, it's our church. And it's our turn to start to plant some seeds. And it's our turn to tend to them a little bit and let God do the growth, and we take it from there. The folks that founded this did that. The folks that are here right now, we have that in front of us too. So Paul said, we should be thinking in the same way, being united, and agreeing with one another. Like I said, in some places it says being of one mind. So does that mean we all have to agree on everything? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. What it does mean is if the body of this church moving in the way that they are moved to do makes a decision one way or another, and we're at least going to talk about decisions today, if the church makes it one way or another and you don't agree with it, but the majority of the church wants to go that way, what Paul is saying is, okay, I don't agree with you, but I'm going to support this decision because this is my church. This holds something incredibly dear to me. This is so important for me to, even when I drive by, I get that little sense of peace that I get when I look at all those old red bricks. They're hanging in there and doing what they've got. So that's part of it. The other part that Paul talks about says, if there is encouragement in Jesus Christ. And so what I wonder is sometimes, do you sit here, do you ever feel encouraged? Do you ever feel that the Spirit is trying to move you to do something? Do you ever have that nagging feeling in your head that it's time to get moving? That it's encouragement that you need to do? Well, we can just by being a little open, we can feel that encouragement. We can feel that part that God is trying to tell us that, okay, here's what's in front of you. Maybe it doesn't look great, but trust me, we got this. Go plant your seeds, get to work, and it's going to work out. You will be able to fulfill your promise. You will be able to fulfill your purpose. And we ask that God will help us to grow in many, many, many ways. I only pray, folks. My friends, that somewhere inside you, whether it's today or whether it's this week, that somewhere you're going to feel that spirit inside you. You're going to feel that encouragement coming to you. And you will know that we get to build a brand new church. And maybe today is the day that we begin. Whatever it's going to look like, I promise you, the ministry will be strong. And it will be good. Amen. Time for a little music right now.
Thank you.
That was good. That was really good. Really, really good. All right. So now, let's find ourselves in the time of prayer. And again, I know I ask you when we start the service, we do a time of reflection to kind of put yourself in a different place. But this is another time where you can find that you are in a quiet place, that you are by yourself, and you can just open up, hear the words that you're praying here. Maybe something will come to your mind that will take you in a different direction. Let it happen. Let us now take some time and let us pray together. Lord of hope and healing, you have heard the cries of our hearts. You know that we do want to serve you, and yet when things get tough, we buckle and we cave in. We lack the courage and the strength to work for you. You have reminded us that you will be continually with us, and we need to place our trust in that fact. Your love will sustain and heal us. Your mercy and grace will give us courage and strength, joy and peace. As we have come before you today, offering our prayers for those near and dear to us, let us remember that you constantly lift and carry us with your love. Bring us to the knowledge of your mercy and powerful love that will never leave us. Prepare us for the ministry you have planned to plant your seeds and to be there as they grow. These things we ask in Jesus' name, and we pray to you now as one body in unity, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay, just a couple things before we go again. Remember to clean your pews, although I would imagine we're gonna kind of sit tight where we are right now, and we'll make the move after the meeting. And I've totally lost the doubt to look and see where she's at, so I'm just gonna roll with it and say that's what we're gonna do. To remember um, that uh, if you have some requests, that uh, you are very, very welcome to uh, Put those into the basket or our little recipe cards back there and pencils. If there's something you want to know about for us, or you can send an uh, email to the church, or you can call the church number and leave a message. We will respond to that and we will make things happen. Next Sunday is a communion Sunday, but I got big news, huge news for you. Next week for communion, we have in our possession these cups. And on top of them, it's a little wafer. Boy, it's taking me back to my childhood. Being a good Lutheran and eating my wafer every Sunday when I went to get communion. Boy, I see a lot of nods going there too, so it'll be good for us. It's got a little wafer in it inside. There's a little bit of grape juice. And so it's a little pop open cop. We will have those here. We can dispose of them afterwards in the back or what have you. But that way you don't have to be bringing your own stuff if you don't want to. If you would rather bring your Cheetos or Frito-Lays or whatever you want to bring and your Diet Coke, that's fine with us. But if you're looking to do it, you can be part of communion. We will have these cups. And we've actually got quite a few of them that we can probably get two or three months out of the box that has shown up. So we're ready with that. Um, next Sunday at 1030, we will meet with the confirmation mentors. Today at 1030, we're going to meet with the confirmation class and some parents. And that will be fun. And we'll go with that. Okay, so as our calling today, as our sending out, I want to share with you, this is from the 78th chapter of Psalm, 
And it says, we will speak in our own parables. We will teach the lessons from our past. Stories we have heard and stories we have known. We will share these stories with the next generation about the glorious work the Lord has done among us. And so I ask you today to go in peace, to go plant the seeds of God, and to watch them grow and be part of everything good. Amen.